Hi, I'm Fernando Pereira from UFMG and today we will take a look into different ways to visualize programs using the LVM compilation infrastructure. To visualize programs we shall use the LVM optimizer OPT. That's a tool that comes together with the LVM distribution. Some people call it opt, I shall stick to OPT, that's up to you. We have already seen that a compiler is formed by three modules, the front end, the middle end and the back end. OPT corresponds to what we call the middle end. And as you might remember, if you watched the last class, OPT takes a file into the LVMIR format and produces a new file, also in the LVMIR. The LVMIR, or Intermediate Representation, is a programming language that represents the programs that LVM manipulates. OPT is a command line tool. That means that we can run it in a shell. You can find where OPT is by looking into the bin folder of your LVM build. There will be many more tools in that folder. Do you remember our first class? OPT will be one of those tools. If you want to know which version of it you have, you can run OPT with the version flag. In my case, that's what I get. Notice that I have a debug build with assertions. That means that I can easily use LLDB to debug passes that run on OPT, for instance. The kind of build that you have depends on how you've compiled the LLVM. In my distribution, a debug build was the default. Anyways, how can we use OPT and what can we do with it? One thing that we can use OPT for is to visualize programs. We can also use OPT to analyze code. For instance, we might want to know which kind of instructions the pointer contains or how many loops or how many pointers a program has. Um, we might want to know if the program contains vulnerabilities to attacks like SQL injections. And we might want to know lots of other things about the program. And finally, we can use OPT to transform the program. There are different kinds of transformations that we might want to run. For instance, we might want to insert instrumentation in a program to find something about its execution. We might also want to optimize the program. OPT already contains lots of optimizations and in this course we shall look into some. We shall start this course showing how we can use OPT to visualize code though. That's very useful if you want to know more about that code. OPT represents programs in the dot format, DOT. That's a format to represent graphs in general actually. So let's take a look into different ways to see this program. Don't worry about what it does, we just want the code. Assuming that the program is called diag.c, we first need to use Clang to put it into LVM intermediate format. We can use this command, which we have already seen in previous classes. And then we can use the .cfg flag of OPT to generate a file in the dot format. This command creates a file called dot identity. The dot in front of the file naming indicates that the file is not visible. But the file is there. That's actually a text file. You can take a look into its content using the cat command in Linux. And if you want to transform this file into something that you can visualize, you can use the dot command, which you can install in Linux. This is the program in the LVMIR format. This representation has a name, actually. It's called a control flow graph. The vertices of the graph are called basic blocks. They represent sequences of instructions that always execute together. The edges, in turn, represent possible paths in the program. And if we zoom in the graph, you will see that the basic blocks are formed by multiple instructions. These instructions are in the LVM intermediate representation. 
There are many programs that we can use to visualize DOT files. We had used the DOT tool to visualize them. You can easily install this command line tool in Linux. It's part of the GraphZ package. But in truth, there are many, really many programs that you can use to visualize DOT files, so you can try the one that suits you better. Anyways, coming back to LVM, there are many other formats that you can use to visualize a program. For instance, if you want to see only the vertices and edges of the control flow graph without instructions, it's also possible. You can replace the .cfg flag with the .cfg only flag. And then you can see the vertices and edges of the CFG. This format helps to understand the structure of the program. For instance, in this case, we can see three cycles in the program. Each one corresponds to a different loop. Let's now try a different visualization. We shall see how the basic blocks in the program can be grouped into regions. These regions are subgraphs of the CFG that have only one entry point and that go to and that go to only one exit point. You can find more about program regions in this paper from Ferranti, Ottenstein, Warren. John Ferranti actually has done a lot of good stuff in the field of compilers. This work, for instance, about program dependence graphs is from 1987. Since then she worked in many other research projects related to design and implementation of compilers. Anyways, let's visualize the single entry, single exit regions of our example program. We can do it using OPT with the flag .cfg only. Our example has four regions. They are nested on each other. The three inner regions represent loops. You can check that every region has just one entry point, I mean one basic block that gives access to it and it's only possible to leave the region through a single exit point, which is not inside the region, by the way. It's easier to see the structural relations between program regions and source codes if you visualize the regions without instructions. For that, we can use OPT with the dot regions only flag. That's the image that we obtain in this case. As an exercise, if you want, you can stop the video and try to find some correspondence between the regions in the CFG and the blocks of source code in the program. Some correspondences are pretty easy to spot, like the innermost loop of our program. To compute program regions, we use a data structure called Dominator Tree. We can visualize Dominator Trees as well. I will not explain what's a dominator tree, but if you want, you can take a look into some basic code optimization course. I'm leaving a link down in the presentation for that. For instance, that's the dominator tree of our example program. You can produce this dot file adding the flag minus dot dom to OPT. OPT will write the textual representation of the graph in a file that starts with the prefix dumb, meaning dominator tree. And if you want to see only the basic blocks organized in the dominator tree, you can specify that as well. To do it, use the dot dumb only flag. That's the representation that we obtain. As an exercise, you might guess what's the meaning of the dominator tree if you compare it with the control flow graph. A path from A to B in the dominator tree means that any execution of the program will have to cross A to arrive at B. And there are other ways to visualize programs, other formats I mean. You can find them out using OPT's helper. In my LVM distribution, which is version 11, that's the relation of program visualization representations that I have. We had already seen most of them the post dominator tree is the inverse of the dominator tree. I will not show it in this course. But if you want to know more about post dominator trees, I can recommend a nice online class about this data structure. But before we finish this course, I will show you the call graph. The call graph is a graph whose vertices denote functions and whose edges show relations between callers 
and colleagues. For instance, let's take a look into this program. You can produce the program call graph using the dot call graph flag. For this program, that's what you would obtain. We see, for instance, that function main calls function fact. We say that function main is the caller and function fact is the callee. Um, and if you want to check the program in a different format, you can, for instance, make factorial recursive and then you will see that the call graph has changed and now fact has this loop line. And that closes our presentation. It was rather brief, um, but much more information about the LVMIR and about how to visualize it is available in the language manual. Thank you.